Hello, and thanks for listening. So, it didn't take me long. I was surfing on the internet, and I found a couple of sites, and they were business-oriented sites, and they were small businesses, and they were black businesses, and I thought it was interesting because there were a couple of businesses that seemed like they were websites, and they pretty much were listing out all of the black businesses that were in different cities and then there were some businesses that were independent they're smaller and they're independent and I'm trying to pull it up right now as a matter of fact (laughs) so I'll just read off a couple of titles one was organization of black screenwriters which I thought that was interesting because it's fairly new and it should be coming up pretty soon. There's this one called businessorg.homepage black in Los Angeles. So I also ran into something called B100's nation's most successful black owned businesses and then buy black movement. And so I thought these things were pretty interesting. And I found that in under 20 minutes. So I'm saying this to say that there are people who are have making efforts to create smaller businesses. The problem with black community in some of these cities is that they go outside of these areas and then they buy from other organizations that don't cater to black community that are you know mainstream but I would say that black community can be mainstream it just can center and cater to black culture but be inclusive of other cultures as well the same as how regular mainstream is inclusive or supposedly inclusive of everybody but it doesn't really have an a specific culture that it's inclusive of it's just in a an open market for everyone you know like Amazon or eBay or some company where it's just large and it has like a multitude of different products and anybody can choose anybody can buy from it anybody can utilize it it, it it's not sp- specific to one group or one ethnic group or one gender or anything like that it's just like like an omni market and what I've noticed is is from living in Los Angeles I noticed I'm using this group as an example Korean population that's here it used to be in the Wilshire area there was a small little pocket Vermont Wilshire somewhere in there like Normandy between Normandy and Pico and sort of in that little area and then you have Vermont and then you have Hoover and then you have this long strip of Wilshire is like K-Town and you had like some stores that were small mom-and-pop stores you know they sold like things like clothing boutiques makeup anything you could think of I guess that you might find oh well it's off the shelf type stuff and then you have like stores where you constantly go in there's there were it used to be liquor stores but those were in communities where it was black communities and it usually catered towards a uh, black population but not not necessarily viewed as being positive the store owner was owning the store and he was making money off of people spending their money in his store um, in a community that isn't primarily catering just to Koreans so but K-Town is what it is called has grown over the years so what I've known is it started off as something small like a small pocket of our stores or chain of stores and it it was restaurants barbecue uh, Korean uh, barbecue restaurants and different um, boutiques clothing boutiques outlets and some some places are like practices like 
dentist offices, uh, places where you can get eyeglasses and your eyes checked. Um, it has grown over the years and it has become wide wider and it's no longer that small little pocket so it's just seemed like that little pocket just exploded and there are other businesses that are growing that are Korean businesses and Korean owned and so with that being said I think the same thing could happen for the black community just the same if you had people who were really serious and if you had a community where we supported one another more in business and in more serious events that center around wealth building and I believe that's the thing that black community lacks is that we don't support one another enough in businesses and in uh, business ventures and in serious issues when it comes to building wealth in the community a lot of times we're consumers and we like to spend money and we'll go outside of our communities and we'll spend money elsewhere and then we don't respect one another and we don't have trust in one another and we won't build businesses in a community that thrive it may last for a season and then it begins to become obsolete because we don't support each other to help grow the businesses so that that one small business can grow into something larger and spread out so that other people will become inspired and open up their businesses and that's usually how it works it's like a domino effect and so I've seen that happen in the Korean community and so it is now called what is called K-Town and so you have like all these bustling thriving businesses it seemed like there were little holes in the walls at first but now they've gained so much uh, property and income and so uh, uh, they've bought up a lot of storefronts and so that's how the businesses are growing and then what they do is is they cater to their own culture because in their mind it's about business and about wealth building and growth and they learn the tools that it, they need to build wealth here in America and I feel like that's the problem that's the reason why we lack some of the things that we should have in terms of black community and I believe that's why in the Lamert Park area of the Crenshaw district there were some small stores and a lot of those stores were bought out um, a lot of those stores are vacant they were small like little businesses and they catered to a, a black community now I don't know what they're going to be replaced with I would think that because there still is the face of the black community still that exists in the Lamert Park area that those businesses will reflect the culture that is living in that area now I know that I've heard this that sometimes with change or with time different communities will change over the years you know just like with gentrification where you will have a community it might be small families and then later you have wealthier people that come in and they buy the places out and they tear all of the smaller places down and build condominiums so, so that was what the big fight was in Lamert Park I know that some land developers had came over there and they wanted to take some of the storefront property and build condominiums now I don't know what happened as of recent with that but I do know at recently when I drove over there that a lot of the little businesses that used to be like boutiques stores um, restaurants that were african-american primarily centered have been bought out now I don't know what they're going to replace them with I do know that there are still restaurants there's restaurants that cater to a uh, uh, Jamaican cuisine um, uh, type of feel there's SO one books store they still have some events that are political events there's poetry readings and but I noticed there's a homeless population in that area as well and so that's not a good look in terms of the black community and it's just down below from what is 
quote unquote call the Black Baldwin Hills. And so as you go up into that area, there is an area where you see like these mini mansions of these beautiful homes of black homeowners. And that's when you go into the Ladera, you're going towards the Windsor Hills, Ladera Heights, and some of the other places where they're relatively um, black people who are um, not really as downtrodden. <laughs> In other words, they're not homeless and they're not economically, they're doing a, a lot better than what people would assume um, when you look at media and what have you. But I notice that when it starts with something small and people are all collectively involved and they're serious about something, it can grow into something huge. So I feel like the biggest problems that we have is people are not trying to learn how to control um, what it is that their motivations are and their motivations are in, in causes and things that are not building their communities and for one DACA is I, I, I'll just be honest I know that some people want to support that and it might be within good reason but if you've got the same people who you're supporting that won't support you and your causes then you really need to reevaluate who you're following and what you're supporting um, the other issue is is that I think people are not as serious there's some people who are not as serious about black owned businesses not enough you don't have enough seriousness in it and so there's a select few of people who are serious and so it's gonna take that select few to actually build and to actually grow the businesses and to actually promote there's gonna be, have to be some people that are gonna be willing to promote these businesses and it's just sad because I think that it can be done it's just the the, the thing is is that people need to have a collectiveness of their community and a oneness and a unity and if everybody's all into prostitution and drugs and get rich quick schemes and crime and how to get over or how to buck the system or just give up on life and let the man take over or whatever then you're never gonna you're never gonna amount to anything that you you want to start it'll never be accomplished because you never you never took that step and so I believe that the problem with people is is they give up too quickly and they give up give up on their own people too quickly and like I said um, a while back there was some business uh, restaurants it may seem like it isn't nothing in the beginning but it is something because if one restaurant can grow into many restaurants and you have it being black owned and it can become something lucrative and, and um, rewarding and fulfilling and then it can help motivate others to grow their businesses and then before long you'll know that wow there's more wealth in the black community in terms of the business world than people really knew existed and so I think that's the reason why sometimes um, I will I guess maybe from getting older I've taken things a little bit more seriously I guess sometimes that has to do with maturity level of people too because some people's maturity level isn't there some people just never seem to grow up and realize you know that there are other things in life more important than you know just hanging out and you know spending your money and not really investing in anything or saving for an emergency so um, I'm looking at one site I'm just gonna take one site for example there's buy black movement there's supporters there's marketers there's suppliers now there's different products and there are different people and you can order the products online and everyone you see on this website and I'm gonna say it again it's called um, tag team marketing by black movement 
it has like stores events it, it talks about some of the latest um, news of some of the things that have happened in terms of political um, debates uh, underneath it says uniting black people to buy from black owned businesses and so this is exactly what I was talking about and so like for example here's something that's called aroma therapy mist now I could easily go to like you know here in LA we have a lot of like beauty supply shops all over the place and they're Korean owned most of them and they have some of these same products like African black soap, shea butter, Harvest Health Set. Um, they have uh, moisturizer and creams and hair products and what have you. But I could get the same products from a black, maybe a black products from a black store owner or from um, a realtor that is is black owned and that little bit of money can help grow that person's business and then they may have business partners and then it may get larger or, and cause other businesses that are black owned to expand and so that's the way it happens it starts a little bit at a time so it could I be anywhere things that you would find maybe insignificant it could be like a t-shirt it could be like soap it could be something small it doesn't have to be something extremely expensive and you know if you're liking the product and you feel confident about it and you say you know I'm buying from a black business and I'm buying a product that I like I like the way it smells and I think you know I don't always buy it but I'm probably gonna buy it more often from this individual before long that person will grow their business now I know some people have been upset because I heard the controversy behind Carol's daughter how you know it's black owned and she started off small and her business began to grow and now she's catering to a larger group which is the mainstream community and a lot of these places where they start small some people they turn their back on their own community and that's what the argument was that we tend to forget where we came from so to speak and so we need more people who will stay relatively loyal to their fan base but also you have to be honest to say that when something is really big and it's really lucrative and it makes a lot of money it is gonna explode and it is gonna grow and you have to not close off a larger population of people because if they appreciate your product and they know primarily it is centered towards African Americans they wouldn't mind coming into a community that's thriving that's an African American community that has businesses that are bustling that are um, productive and that are successful and say you know I'm not black but I like supporting black community or black owned businesses because I like this product I like the way it smells I like the way it feels you know I like the way this soap smells or I like the scent of this moisturizer and you know it's not to say that that other people can't use these products so I just wanted to put that out there but this I'm seeing it's called Motherland's Gold Capsules, there's soap sets, there's um, uh, washes, and so those are just some small examples. I know maybe there's some people already know about these sites. Maybe some people out there are, are part of these sites and they've helped in building these sites. But I find that this is just one step in the right direction so they have also events and their business events or business oriented events and motivative speakers come out and they talk on how to unite people to build a small business to grow larger and also they have people who are trying to help in the movement to buy black movement so I just thought that was just something to put out there because I noticed that you know when I had looked at K-Town 
what we say it in LA, it's K-Town, that it started off like little holes in the walls. You had these little small stores and it just seemed like they weren't going to go anywhere. But as time progressed and people started catering to these businesses and funding them and within their own community, it just seemed to explode and expand. And before long, a little s s corner street became what is now like a whole neighborhood and now is a town and so um, I know I've heard other um, people who are notable who have spoke on these issues and I don't agree with everything but I do agree with wealth building I do agree with people trying to start off with something small and then build in within the communities for positiveness uh, I feel like when young black people who see other black people who are successful um, it it motivates them it makes them see that I don't have to be a rapper I don't have to be somebody famous and necessarily quote unquote on TV I could be a business owner I could be an entrepreneur I could be a doctor or a lawyer I could be you know maybe somebody that owns a small restaurant and now I become big and now I own a chain of restaurants and so there's other ways to become successful other than those stereotypical ways that have been taught to some of the kids like when I in the 80s when I was growing up black boys thought the only way to become successful is to become a rapper or to become some sports figure and we know realistically everybody is not athletically inclined and those who are don't always get picked they don't always get drafted uh, they're not a draft pick and then we know not everybody is always talented or has rapping skills or becomes famous and then you have some people who are talented but they never were noticed and they just stay kinda stuck and they never never really went anywhere with their talent and it's pretty much a waste and a lot of times you have to have other goals in mind to fall back on that are a little bit more longevity that can carry you out that you know you know that if you get older you can retire and you can live a little bit more comfortably so anyway I just thought those were some things to put out there because I know other people have talked about wealth building they talked about how to build and, and how to bounce money in the black community for more than six times you know spending your black dollars in your black communities and I don't think that's a bad thing now I've heard people say oh that's racist oh you shouldn't well you guess what I've seen it happen in K-Town I've seen it happen in the Hispanic community where they'll have small restaurants or a small store and now they've got big supermarkets all the food caters to that particular ethnic group nothing caters to the black community whatsoever unless it's like afro latin and it's not really primarily black community it's more a wider range of different regions of latin america and so those are things that i think people should really consider and so by being proud of who you are and trying to build businesses in your your community with people who look like you people who see that you care about your community and people like you that you have jobs you're employed that you become educated that you become affluent you're not on the street corner hanging out you're not left to the wayside they don't call your community a wasteland like what happened in Detroit where all the jobs are taken away because nobody has any entrepreneurial skills all they're used to doing is working for someone else but they can't make money work for them so this is the kind of thing that people are faced with and so I think people need to consider these as, as options I'm just like saying it to throw it out on the table but I feel like if people really take that whole thing serious even if it's as little as attending a se seminar or even listening to a seminar and uh, motivating kids you know there are other things that you can be besides a ball player and you know I'm not saying to don't follow your dreams but also consider some of the other things that can help 
that may even be far reaching than just being a sports figure because a lot of those people end up retiring because their back gives out or their legs give out or they have a lot of injuries and so they wind up trying to invest in uh, their money into you know uh, small companies and businesses because they know now they're older they can't run back and forth up on, on a field or a court anymore so they have to keep the money flow going when they've retired because money is depleting so these are the things that people should consider and I just thought that those were some some smart options I don't know that everybody really would agree I'm just putting it out there as a mere um, a suggestion but I'm sure that there are some people there's a, there's even maybe a handful of people that may say yeah that makes a lot of sense because you know we are in need of more support for our communities even if it has to be something that starts off small and then grows into something larger now I have seen there are some shopkeepers there from Africa um, even their businesses are small but they're not as big as when you see like the you know a lot of people will go to the Korean beauty supply shop and they skip over and don't go to the African beauty supply shop you know it's the same products in there or maybe they'll sell something a little bit different in one store than another store it just seems like for that community in, um, in K-Town it seemed like they just everything is business about business about money it's about you know get as many consumers in to buy the product and it benefits us as as, as our culture and that's how K-Town grew and I feel like the black community if you K-Town can do it if the Latin community community can do that I believe the black community have people and they do have intelligent people who have a mindset to grow their communities starting from something as little as a small store small business um, and it grows into something larger uh, and so I believe there are some stores that are going to be opening some restaurants that will be opening soon in the Crenshaw area now the Crenshaw district in LA usually does cater to a larger uh, population of African American community it's sort of a mix um, Hispanic and, and Afro uh, African American people and so that community you know is is really well known for throwing events um, they'll have like uh, festivals sometimes of uh, block parties and they'll have like some uh, pan-african festivals at the uh, the mall and uh, I just think that if people really really pay attention to what time we're in living in and they really give it some thought that there could be some s slow changes that could be made economically speaking well thanks for listening